Hey, everyone. Welcome to Locked on Lakers for Monday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky, quite possibly the game of the year for the Lakers, the largest comeback in the NBA this season. We'll see how this propels the Lakers going forward. That's next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, no matter how or where you get your podcast. It's always going to be free for you and never putting anything behind a paywall and Locked On Lakers on YouTube. Uh, which is where I would imagine uh, well over 12,000 subscribers are throwing a party right now, uh, Andy, uh, because of this game on Sunday, which we will get into in in ex- excruciating detail because it's just that much fun. Um, excruciating? That's not excruciating detail. That's exhilarating detail. Whatever Dummy. the right word is. They Penny won. Word. <laughs> they won 111 to 108. Not just the biggest comeback of the NBA season, the biggest comeback for the Lakers since 2002, December 6, 2002, against, interestingly enough, the Dallas Mavericks. Uh-huh. To put in perspective how long ago we are talking, this was a lineup for the Lakers of Kobe, Fisher, Shaq, Rick Fox, and our boy Slava Medvedenko to start the game versus Dirk Nowitzki, Michael Finley, Steve Nash, pre-return to Phoenix, Rafe LaFriends, and Adrian Griffin. That is how long ago. Rafe LaFriends. I'm not even sure Rafe LaFriends has been spoken about on Locked on Mavericks (laughs) like in that time. By the way, you say 2002. um, That's a year before LeBron got in the league. (laughs) Yeah. That is is staggering. But Mm -hmm. like LeBron only missed that game by like, 12 months or something like that. Um, 138 and 0 were teams in the NBA this year that had gone up uh, by 27 points. It is why, like, if, if you had those dudes in your prize picks thing, and again, today's episode is brought to you by prize picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Uh, like, Safe, safe uh, choices there <laughs> in these well, types of activities. They were safe until. The right. 2023 Lakers came around. The new look 2023 right. Lakers. So we, we there's so up. much there's so much we need to talk about. We'll get we'll get us through as much of it as we can on Monday. We will get through the rest of it on Tuesday. There are players, Andy. We have to talk about uh, LeBron from a health standpoint, also from a performance standpoint. We need to talk about Anthony freaking Davis and what he did, particularly in the second half uh, of this game. Uh, we need to talk about Schroeder. We need to talk about Jared Vanderbilt. I mean, who's I forget the statue outside of the crypt, Andy. They need to put a statue of the guy at City Hall. Like, we're just moving on to Los Angeles icon at this point. We're passing the team, and like, that's where <laughs> that, that is where we're going here. Jared um, Vanderbilt just. Show just franchise icon alone for his post game outfit today, bucket hat with fishing lures on it, sunglasses, chain necklace, and a button down shirt with ripped off sleeves that looks like it was spray painted by an eight year old. Like, right, and I suspect he that actually, is an icon. I think he tore those sleeves off himself because he is just that strong. Um, and we're we got we're going to get into all of these things. Um. But I, I say I, I want to talk just about the context of this game for before we do because it is it is difficult to overstate how big this is because I you remember for Friday's show I said you know coming off the win um, the other night like if they could win in, against Dallas they beat Golden State you know kind of a weakened Golden State team looked really good doing it but like if you go into Dallas. And you win this game. Now you've won three in a row, and your your new lineup is really proving itself um, to be viable. That it could be the kind of thing that could kick off the type of seven and seven of nine, ten of thirteen, whatever it might be. That was true, Andy. Before you put this game in context, where they're down twenty seven points and fight their way back through that, not with some sort of furious you know, rally or whatever, but like just 
grinding it down and grinding it down. I don't know how you felt, Andy. The Lakers got the lead down from 27 to 14 at the half. I have never felt more optimistic about a second half where the team that I'm following here is down by 14. I was like, they sh- they showed something at the end of that first half. Like, they were not letting go of this game or this season. I was really impressed. Yeah, I mean, and the context increases even more when you consider they did not have D'Angelo Russell in this game. That, that ankle that kept him more or less out of the entire Pelicans win. You know, he had been listed as doubtful. He tried to give it a go before the game. Didn't end up playing. You know, maybe the fact that he was able to even go through the pregame warmups speaks to some optimism with Tuesday's game. We'll see. But the Lakers did this not at full strength against a Mavericks team that was is now at full strength that added Kyrie Irving. Yes. So again, on the road, they have been really good. The Mavericks at home, and you know, the Lakers. The, it reminded me in the beginning a lot of the Portland loss, the only yes. loss of, of the true no-look Lakers because Portland began that game with just a barrage of insane threes and just an insane volume of threes and the Lakers totally unable to respond. The Lakers, I believe, were 0 for 14 behind Correct. the arc before Troy Brown hit a three with 6.53 left in the first half. And I believe even after they hit that one, I believe they were one for 19 at the half. Yeah, um, I mean... They, they, were, they, they, they finished the game down 43 points at the three-point line. Right. It's not like they made up that gap. <laughs> right. So it reminded me a lot of that, except you could see earlier signs of the Lakers actually getting back into this thing. They mm-hmm. started... They started cranking up both their in their defensive intensity, which led to defensive disruption, which led to their ability to get out more in transition. I know we're going to talk about them, but my God, Jared Vanderbilt was in the middle of all of that. The offense, everything. It, he, Fifteen points, seventeen rebounds, eight of them offensive. He is I'm sorry. Yeah, no, eight of them offensive, yes. He is who the Lakers thought that they signed in 1999 with Dennis Rodman, like (laughs) right down to the outfits, except he is – Jared Vanderbilt, at least so far, does not seem to be such a pain in the ass that I'm not making this up. Kobe one time talked about that season, and he said that he really doesn't remember that. He thinks that like subconsciously he's just blacked out the Dennis Rodman experience. <laughs> he's like, I, I think just from a psychological it's Sort of how like a lot of people look at the pandemic. Like it's just like that yeah. whole year and a half, two years. It's like I don't don't remember. My kids were never left the house and they were, we were here. You'd think I remember, but I, I have none. Yeah. Um, I mean, Kobe actually, I'm not kidding. He actually did describe it that way once. But they they just started playing more and more to their strengths. They started making life much more uncomfortable for for Luka, especially defensively. You know, if if there is, I guess, you know, when when it comes to just overall physicality, you know, Dennis Schroeder is a more physical defender than D'Angelo Russell. So if if you're looking for some type of, I guess, thing that you can use not having D'Lo there because, you know, they certainly missed him is outside shooting, if nothing else. But just, you know, and Schroeder, I thought, did a really nice job in this game too. And he was in the middle of a lot of defensive ru- disruption as well. Everybody, just, everybody, after that first quarter, Andy, I thought, you know, they, they gave up 33 points in the in the second quarter and, all, and, and you know, whatever. But, you know, Dal- I thought they did a an outstanding job defensively um, as, as the game went on. The, my big takeaway, and I tweeted this out at Cam Brothers after this game, is that obviously there is still a lot of tough road ahead of the Lakers, and they remain one injury away from yet another round of adversity, and we'll see what happens with LeBron, see what happens with D'Lo. But this roster is for real. Like This is a legitimate roster that I'm not saying if they get into the playoffs, they're going to pull the upset of the century – and win the whole thing, but this is, they may not even have enough time for all of that, but this is a legit roster. This is not a roster you want to be playing. You just don't. 
And so we'll, we'll get to LeBron and some of the injury questions. We'll get to the individual performances here and what these mean. Um, I can't do a full standings update as we're recording. Oklahoma City's playing. Minnesota is playing. Portland plays tonight. Um, the Clippers play tonight. But, you know, I, I tweeted this out as well. Like right now, like literally right now, um, there are 10 teams in the Western Conference, and this will not change based on on sun, the rest of Sunday's results. There are 10 teams in the Western Conference with between 29 and 32 losses. The Lakers have 32. The Suns, who lost Sunday afternoon, have 29. The Clippers have uh, 29 pending. You know, it could be 30 after they lose to uh, if they lose to Denver Sunday night. It is incredibly tight. Like you know, it's it's sort of important to look at losses. You can look at wins. You, can, you know, you can look at losses. Whatever you want to do, but like. That is 10 teams within three losses of each other in the standings with you now 21 games for the Lakers left to play, 22. Um, they, they, they could finish out. They could finish 21. fifth. 21 games left. 21 games, thank you. They could finish out. They could finish fifth. It is insane what this is. And this game, I really do believe, is the kind of thing that if the injuries, especially if the injuries, I don't want to say break the right way for the Lakers, but you get it, then this really could be the kind of thing that pushes them forward. Let's talk about uh, the, uh, what to expect maybe on Tuesday, who might or may not be available, and then let's break down some of these performances because they were spectacular. We'll do all of it next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Prize Picks. Laker fans, if you've not signed up for Prize Picks yet, you're missing out on daily fantasy made easy. Prize Picks has the best NBA DFS prop game on the market, more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator, superstar players, bench players. Just pick two to six players and predict whether or not they will notch more than their Prize Picks stats projections. You can win up to 25 times your money, and Prize Picks offers projections on everything. Baseball's coming up, women's college basketball, even disc golf. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Safe, fast withdrawals. Download the PricePix app or go to pricepix.com. Sign up, play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match, instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with the promo code locked on. Again, don't forget the promo code locked on. That's how you get the instant match. If you're not playing prize picks, you don't know what you're missing. Uh, some housekeeping, and it's it's important housekeeping. It's important to keep your house clean generally, Andy. Um, LeBron James, uh, you mentioned D'Lo took part in pregame warm-ups. Still not sure if he'll be able to play on, on Tuesday. LeBron finished Sunday's game, but did so in a considerable amount of pain. And the pattern this year for these types of moments where, in this case, it was the right foot, um, right foot, right ankle, um, is He's running he, out of feet and ankles to not bother him right now, man. He, he will often finish the game, but then miss the next one which, because you you finally get off of it, you settle, you set it down, it starts to swell, and so on. So you know there is certainly a strong possibility the Lakers would be without Russell um, and LeBron on uh, Tuesday, um, but. Be, again, be, that you you win this game, um, now you have a little bit more leeway that if you know that you you can go and I think a split, but in that back to back would have been what you know like the reasonable goal here. You come out of the break three and one in your first four games. Both of us think you need fifteen wins with the twenty three that they had. Um, that gives you eight losses. You've used one in four games if you can split those. Um, it's tr it's just a tremendous pickup for this for this team to come back and win this game especially in the way they had which player do you want to start with andy well i i, I, I just I, there's so many good stories out of this one <laughs> well just a little bit more detail with lebron like you he got treatment while on the bench during this game and you could see that it was bothering him and the, and the area where i could see the like the aspect of it that really stood out to me is that he wasn't driving at all it's not that he wasn't moving. Like LeBron was able to move in this game, but it felt to me like he was avoiding driving, like where he would have to like repeatedly plant 
on that right yeah, foot. Yeah, he like went he was, sort of old man YMCA, yep. bully ball down in the post, used the footwork. Like it was a really good <laughs> opportunity to see all the step throughs and the little up fakes. And like yeah. it's, we saw a little bit more of LeBron's bag. Um, mm-hmm. on Sunday in ways that we don't always see it with yeah. those little moves. It was fun. It was, I mean, it was painful literally, but it was fun. Yeah. I mean, it really, it, it speaks to just, you know, we, you and I used to marvel at Kobe's fundamentals and like, you know, his footwork that we, we actually did years ago, a podcast with, um, it was Hakeem Olajuwon who worked with Kobe on post footwork. And we talked with Hakeem about it <laughs> Kind of laughed. He's like, I didn't really have a ton to teach him. <laughs> like he was already really good. He just wanted to. Val- I just he just went to him to validate. But, but, like, but you, like LeBron doesn't get as much credit for those things because he is not an as elegant right a exactly. player as Hakeem as but that, as Kobe. But that's that to me though is really where you could see it with mm-hmm. LeBron. Just like that, he was either like you said using the old man game when he was really close to the basket, step throughs, things like that, or putting up a couple threes that, you know, I was like, they're a bit forced, but I get it. Like I, I, I understand I'm not going to kill him for it. Cause he can, he, the mobility was limited. I get, you know what, let's, we, we, we touched on Jared Vanderbilt a little bit, but we might as well just wrap up on him before, sure. as far as the specific guys. The, I thought he really was the most, I think he was the most important player for the Lakers in this game because I don't think anybody was more instrumental in getting the Lakers back into this thing, like you know, sparking rallies, sort of beginning the the inch by inch grinding, like you put it, but also too just creating an energy that felt infectious uh-huh. in this game, and it was on both ends. It was ripping down rebounds and running with them. It was passes that he threw. It was, you know, seeing when defenders were ignoring him and either slipping in for baseline cuts for baskets or slipping in for offensive rebounds. He just did so many things in this game that I just were critical to making this comeback. And, you know, it's funny because like, yeah, you know, this is this statistically speaking, this is not going to be that you know he's not going to put up seventeen rebounds every game and you know whatever. Um, but the the impact that he has on how the Lakers play, how they play defensively, um, you know, don't like to use energy as a pejorative, but like they needed energy, they needed somebody to kind of just keep playing and pull them through a little bit to 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 be able to come back from down twenty seven. The NBA was 0 in 138 after falling down by 27 points. You know, even the Lakers who make this sort of thing routine and tried to do it twice. They had the, the big Portland thing. Like they like nobody's done 27. Um and Vanderbilt's, you know, you Vanderbilt got AD going. You know, he gave them opportunities for AD to to for put back dunks and all like those those emotional plays that that lift a guy. And it's just, you know, I <laughs> I, I go back to some of those scouting reports that we we, we did with you know whether it's uh, with Ben Beekman, um, whether we when ben we Beacon. talked to Ben Beekman, sorry, uh, I was got another person that we used to work with transposed, but that's a different story. When we talked to David Locke, um, when you know the, the, some of this, the uh, the advanced stats we talked about with uh, Cranjus Smith basketball, like pulling his numbers about how these guys were used and. You can you can get to a place where you start to get almost too deep into the numbers and forget the larger context. Like there is probably a way to optimize Jared Vanderbilt over 82 games that the Lakers may or may not be able to do perfectly. But the other thing that you have to remember is a non-optimized Jared Vanderbilt, the both his literal personal impact and his downstream impacts are going to be so important with a team like the Lakers because it, you have to compare it to who else was there and what they were doing before. And he, even if he's not used perfectly, is so impactful for how he then puts the Lakers' defense into better places that it almost doesn't matter if he's not optimized perfectly. But you know what, though? He also, he also in a lot of ways, puts the offense in good places. And LeBron talked about this after the game because he was asked – you know, the things that he's admired and, you know, becoming a teammate of Jared Vanderbilt, things that he does. And, you know, LeBron studies everybody anyway. 
but he talked about how Vanderbilt uses, and this is something I believe we talked about last week. He uses his lack of gravity to an advantage because mm-hmm. he he hit a three in this game, but he is not somebody that you're going to really pay attention to. From no, teams will give that shot to him every day, all day. Exactly, but he's very conscious of when the guy essentially ignores him when he turns his head to, to ball watch or mm-hmm. he's paying attention to somebody else and he sneaks in for a baseline cut. He sneaks in for that offensive rebound. LeBron talked about it as basketball IQ in its own right. Absolutely. And that's high praise coming from LeBron because smarts is something that he really cares about. He's not going to say that loosely and like, unless he means it. And it's not just, you know, you get the offensive rebound of the putback. Sometimes it's just a tip ball that keeps a play alive. Uh, that happened a couple times over the course of this game where Vanderbilt's activity just kept the play alive long enough for something else to develop. And, you know, I, there are spacing questions when LeBron, you know, a LeBron, AD, Vanderbilt front court could have some spacing issues. There's no question. But it's not, I mean, like, it's not like they didn't get open three pointers in the first half of this game. They just didn't make the first 14 ones for some of them are better than others, obviously, but that's true. It's, you know, I I don't look at their lack of success um, offensively shooting the ball early in this game as like an indication necessarily that that started. This is the starting front court that they're going to go with, and it makes the most sense. And, you know, we'll talk about maybe later in the week. It's like, Hachimura suddenly you know, is finding himself scrapping and playing because Vanderbilt is so versatile defensively um, that now you start pairing him with a guy like Austin Reeves, who was, you know, there are a couple plays that made the uh, the World Wide Web of Kyrie scoring in this game on Reeves, but it ain't Austin's fault. Like this is, huh. you know, Austin making you know one of the great the great one on one ISO players in the league work for every inch. And you know they can switch. Kyrie on was and off eight of twenty two in this game. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying like you, you know you see that sort of defensive versatility morphing around. AD was a monster on the on the defensive side, particularly in the second half. And the whole thing is just so much more coherent with the group they play. Then you know a guy like Troy Brown, who had a, a big three in this game, um, and. And all that, like when he gets on the floor now, he's able to play a a role. He did it for twenty minutes tonight that feels more appropriate for him. So, well, you know, very low usage. Took four threes in twenty minutes. He made the one, um, but a very versatile defender. Plus two in twenty minutes. Like it just it, Vanderbilt's presence slots everybody in a way that that makes so much more sense. What's well, also interesting too, like in terms of things overall making sense, like. Obviously, the most direct comp in Russell Westbrook's replacement is D'Angelo Russell in terms of the role that you're supposed to be providing in creating offense, scoring, you know, running sets, that sort of thing. But in certain respects, Jared Vanderbilt's comp in the way that teams defend him is actually Westbrook. Like he's actually the Westbrook in that. He's the guy, when, when the Lakers are at full strength offensively, D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, LeBron, AD, he's the guy that defenses are going to ignore the most, similar to how they often did with Russell Westbrook, which made having Westbrook on the floor, particularly at the end of the games, sometimes difficult. The difference, though, between Vanderbilt and Westbrook is when, when Vanderbilt doesn't have the ball, he doesn't stop moving. Right. Like he, do, he doesn't take himself out of no, play. He's setting the screens, way Russ did. He's cutting. He's right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So it just, it, it, it speaks to just the different ways that a very unusual role player can sometimes just make a lot of other things make sense beyond just his numbers or beyond his responsibilities. That's a gr- just a great, great point about Russ and that uh, comp in that way. Um, so, uh, all right, let's talk about Anthony Davis, because particularly with a hobbled LeBron, this Anthony Davis was the guy. This was the first time I think we've seen that guy in a in a, in a critical moment uh, since the injury. So we'll get to that next. 
Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for an awesome treat, but you don't want the fat and calories, you got to try yourself a Built Bar. And, you know, it's still pretty adjacent to the holidays. We've had some long three-day weekends, and everybody could stand to eat a little healthier after the damage that you do. But at the same time, you don't want to compromise taste because that's the fun of eating in the first place. That's why you got to try Built Bars. With Built, Healthy is actually tasty. It's perfect for a New Year's resolution or just trying to cut off that President's Day <laughs> weight that everybody puts on. <laughs> As always, probably time to update this copy. <laughs> They're covered in real, 100% real chocolate. It's always a great holiday flavors. somewhere, Andy. <laughs> it's uh, great flavors. Like we live Euro, in festive times. <laughs> peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. Everybody's so excited that the pandemic is essentially over. Uh, they taste like a can Candy bar, but only 130 calories, only four grams of sugar, 17 though grams of protein. That's what you want. That's how you end up jacked. And you don't. Monday is eat. International Polar Bear Day. It's also this is actually perfect. It's International. It's National Protein Day. Perfect. And how about that? Celebrate just, National Protein Day. You don't need to wait around for a box of Built Bars. You can't order them at Built.com. It's great, but you can get them at your Walmart. You can get them at a Sam's Club. However you do this, try your Built Bars because I promise you, you're going to enjoy them. Anthony Davis was awesome in the second half, of, particularly in the second half of, of the game on Sunday. Like the numbers, we talk about this throughout the year. There have been nights where Anthony Davis had 30 points and 15 rebounds and a steal and some blocks. And you're like, I mean, he was good. Like, they're great for my fantasy team. But did I feel him? Did I did did like did you feel like Anthony Davis was changing the course of the game? And sometimes the answer is no. The answer on Sunday was yes, yes, he was changing. Like Anthony Davis hit the big turnaround jumper uh, late in the game. And what I two things I love the play over uh, with, with in, the, in the fourth when he hits the jumper puts the Lakers up. It's him on Luca. It's LeBron gets the ball back out. They double. LeBron gets the ball back out of the top of the key, or somebody does, and they just point right back to Anthony Davis and get the ball right back to him. And the AD gets it. Quick little move, spins on like Luka Doncic is not going to prevent me from getting my shot. Not Luka Doncic. Um, and like he was huge offensively. He was huge defensively. He was everything the Lakers need from Anthony Davis from now until the end of the season. It was so cool to see. Yeah, you talked about just the way he played in the second half. Um, his offensive rating per NBA.com's metrics, 139.5. That's good. Defensive rating, 89.2. That is an overall Very good. net rating of 50.3. <laughs> that is freaking bonkers. The that, raw that is, number, that is, that'll do it. That'll get it done. The raw numbers in the first half were 19 point i mean the second half 19 points nine rebounds three blocks an assist a steal he was five of seven at the line and just the the multiple efforts you know the the disruption that you saw with anthony davis like and it, and it's emblematic on a night where you know lebron i thought was admirable post ankle turn like like he Found ways to help, you know. The, yeah, he was the he was still good. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and he, the final numbers there for LeBron were solid. But but because LeBron was clearly limited, they needed more from Anthony Davis, and they got more uh -huh. from Anthony Davis. He the, the the onus on Anthony Davis. If the Lakers are going to turn this thing around, and regardless of whether or not they win, you know, win a championship kind of make history in their own right because just getting into the playoffs would be a massive turnaround from where they began this season. The onus on Anthony Davis to play at another level is huge. And this this really was the type of game that reminded you why LeBron was willing to disrupt not just the Lakers but the Pelicans in order to get that trade to happen. Yeah, it's uh, why I'm trying to acquire him for the stretch run of my fantasy league too. So, uh, Steve Mason, please answer your emails. Um, so, I just everything like it has been hard to be optimistic about this team. 
And look, I understand Tuesday they could, you know, they could lose Tuesday night in Memphis and, you know, you drop back a game. And like This is not going to be probably a just straight line run up to, you know, the fifth spot in the Western Conference. But assuming guys can stay on the floor, and that is a big if with every team in this league, bigger with the Lakers. Um, you mentioned it before, like they're good, but they have they have an edge and they've like this felt and looked and acted in every way like a playoff game down to the um, Austin Reeves versus uh, Josh, Josh Green. Green, like rivalry we didn't know we had. And like they got into a little dust up in the second half, but it actually started in the first half when Reeves went right into Green's body to, to uh, for an and one one of the few baskets the Lakers scored early in the game. Um, And you could see like, you know, they like Austin Reeves was not taking bleep from anybody uh, in this game. According to Jovan Buha, you know, friend of the show covers the Lakers for the athletic and travels with the team. I assume he's in Dallas. (laughs) I'm assuming he has good seats. He tweeted out at Jovan Buha, Austin Reeves to Josh Green, you ain't bleep. I'll bleep you up. (laughs) And, you know, Josh Green thought he was talking bleep to this Austin Reeves, but it Mild turns out he was ta- handsome farm boy Austin Reeves. Yeah, it turns out he was talking bleep to this Austin Reeves, right. <laughs> the the one the one that looks like the wheel man for a bank right. robbery crew, the guy that covers your face with a pillow and shoots you. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> like it, it was funny too. Like Reeves Reeves afterwards did the you know I don't remember. Was said, which you know is a lie. I did, did not believe him. <laughs> you know he knew exactly what was said, but he did say that Green said something to him that he did not like. And I teammates like when they see, you know, everybody knows Reeves is a good player. Everybody knows he's tougher than he looks. I mean, my the, the guy's face doubles as like a tackling dummy (laughs) like he gets hit in the face multiple times a game every game he's clearly tough but he's not a bleep talker and we've seen this over the years teammates love when the unassuming guy all of a sudden gets into a dust up because you know that's not the fake tough guy thing like that's the real one because those guys has reeves has an edge because you don't (laughs) <laughs> I apologize for trading in stereotypes here. You don't get to where Austin Reeves has gotten on the path that Austin Reeves has taken without believing that you are you have to have a an unusual amount of self-confidence because people are discounting you every step along the way because you are not the most athletic you say <laughs> that guy if austin reeves was actually built like the way that they they reformed him on nba 2k like he he's got you know nice square shoulders and some biceps that are not perceptible in real life like like i, I know he says he put on a bunch of muscle this off season but like he's it's it's not like looking at dwight howard or lebron <laughs> shirtless when he's walking around and a guy like that you know there is a little bit of that, you know, Woody Harrelson, white men can't jump edge. Like, I know you are not taking me seriously and I'm going to leverage that. But you get to the NBA level, it's not, that's not it anymore. He's not hustling people anymore. He's like, I am as good, if not, and I, everything. This was a playoff game and the Lakers have 21 more of these and that can be exhausting and that might take too much out of them to, to really make noise if they can get in. But I'll tell you, like they looked like a team capable of playing quality playoff games because if they look like this, the way they came back, and again, not with some amazing barrage of three-pointers that they'll never repeat or whatever, they just put a foot down and just started chipping away and chipping away and chipping away and chipping away until they were winning. Yeah. And that is a character kind of thing, you know, that's final point, like to compare it to the Philadelphia game that they ended up losing, that the, the Sixers tried to gift them. That would have been a different kind of win. Like kudos for them for not giving up, but that was really the Sixers giving it back to them. This was the Lakers taking a game from a Mavericks team that was trying real hard to win. And here's the, before we go, the most important thing I would say along those lines, the idea of taking it because 
we've seen all year that this is not a team that gives up, that will, they'll put up the fight. And, you know, if they're last year's teams, you know, we joke all the time about the fake comebacks when they were down 20 or so, they'd push to like down to eight eight. or nine. And then it eventually the floor would fall out because they weren't good. (laughs) This, this year's team has always, I think, been genuinely up for the fight, which is in and of itself pretty admirable because they have not been at 500, forget above, at 500 this whole year. Since zero They're, and zero. <laughs> they are now in a position where they can actually close some yeah. games out. Tell me, and I will finish here, but tell me if you noticed this too. The other thing that I think is very different about this is there have been times in the Lakers put in the fight and believed in whatever they come back. Dallas looked at the Lakers and believed they could come back. Like Dallas looked like they were like, okay, like when that game started to get to within 14 to within nine, within seven, like you could see the Mavericks didn't have that look of a team. Like, don't worry. Like this is still <laughs> that group. Like, <laughs> That's adorable. Right. Like, it, it, pat them on the head, and now we, we'll we'll push out with a you know ten two run, and we'll put this thing to bed. They looked concerned because the team they were playing was concerning, and that is a a new look <laughs> for this group. Um, Locked on Lakers uh, on YouTube is where you can go to see the show. It is where you can go to participate in the community, and you should because it is going to be hopping on Monday. Um, I am. I am legitimately excited about what the last 21 games are going to look like for this team. Um, optimism is a thing that has been rare <laughs> over the last couple seasons with the Lakers. I'm going to swim in it uh, like Scrooge McDuck in that Jeff where he's in the money and spitting up the gold coins. Uh, and we will see everybody on Tuesday.